Page 2 Chemistry can really be an uphill battle and by sharing my own experiences and study tips that I've discovered after many many failures along the way, I really hope that this video can help those of you out there who are struggling to find some sort of direction. So just some backstory, I was into my second year in junior college and I scored an E for my second block test and I really felt so screwed because there was just one more chance to redeem myself during the prelim exams before the actual A-level exams. Honestly speaking, at that point of time, I was really really worried because apart from my results, I was not confident at all as I wasn't really sure of how to answer the questions properly and I wasn't really familiar with the content in the lecture notes as well. But I also understand and realize that it's also due to factors such as the school needing to rush and finish teaching the syllabus. So it creates a scenario where you haven't really fully mastered the previous topic, yet you also need to learn about the next topic. And what makes matters worse is that the same thing is happening with other subjects so I really needed to juggle between all of these things. But after taking a break from all the chaos and sitting down to quietly reflect and analyse what I'm not doing right, I tweaked my way of studying H2 chemistry and slowly but surely, as months passed, as I kept calibrating and adapting and improving my study method, I managed to finally achieve an A at the A levels. So, I've summarized 8 strategies that I've discovered and applied throughout my A level journey that helped me conquer H2 chemistry. Firstly, I stopped making my own notes. For me, I found that making my own notes was not effective at all as I'm just basically copying the notes word for word and the worst part was that I don't even remember anything that I wrote down after a few hours. So it really became a huge waste of time and energy. But luckily, I managed to notice this and stop this in time. I understand that making your own notes can be a way to consolidate or summarize whatever is being said in the lecture notes. but. I found a much faster way through getting these two books. By the way, this is not an advertisement and I just wanted to share the two books that really helped me tremendously in making studying easier. This green book right here has helped me a lot in studying organic chemistry because firstly, it can save you lots of time as you don't need to make your own notes and secondly, as a visual learner, this book made my learning much easier by organizing all the reagents and conditions and organic compounds in a nice and comfortable format where you can have a bird's eye view and look at everything at one glance. Which helped me to make links and connections without having to flip your lecture notes back and forth. This ensured that I didn't just work hard, but work smart. So after doing away with copying my own notes, I switched to a much more active and engaging study method and that brings me to strategy number 2, ensuring my basics are solid. Upon reflecting on my weak areas, I realized that my foundation was not strong enough, in the sense that while I covered enough breadth in my content, I didn't cover enough depth. So I ensured that my basics were rock solid by revisiting every single minor detail again and again. To do this, I made use of what I call checkpoint learning. So for example in your lecture notes, there will be worked examples, lecture practices and self-practice questions which serves as checkpoints. So, when studying for a particular topic, I will cover the solution and retry every single one of them. And by retry, I mean to actually take out the full scat paper, a pen or pencil and work it out from scratch. By repeating this whole process, whenever I was studying for a new test, the magical thing that happened was that I would have covered every single checkpoint again and again, building long-term muscle memory. Because I kept seeing the same things again and again, my understanding for the concept deepened more and more because I was able to somehow draw more links together and make more connections every time I revisited them. As a result, I got faster and faster and slowly but surely mastered the basics, which went a very very long way in helping me answer exam questions. Strategy number 3. I did active recall by testing myself consistently. This is especially helpful for things that you have to memorize such as definitions, reagents and conditions for organic chemistry, processes, keywords and the phrasing when answering trend questions in periodic table etc. There were a couple of ways in how I tested myself. The first way is to test yourself is to recall to yourself verbally by just saying it out loud to yourself. Another way to test yourself is by writing it down or to get your friends to test you or vice versa. I feel that this is really effective as not only does it keep your mind active and engaged, 
but for me, if I can't answer what my friend tested me, I somehow remember the correct answer way way better compared to when I was just studying on my own. So a combination of these three methods really help to ensure that I have my content at my fingertips. And after a rigorous repetition of testing myself, it was about time that I got onto practicing exam questions in the prelim papers and the tenure series, which brings me to strategy number four. Practice, practice, and practice. I remember that my school gave me a revision package that consisted of 50 plus questions and I did three questions every single day consistently. I didn't care which part of the day I did it, but so long as I hit my goal of three questions per day, I'm good. The reason was because I wanted to complete the whole book before the prelim exams. So I planned in advance and by making a consistent effort to do three questions every day, I started gaining more and more momentum, something like a snowball effect. For the prelim papers and the tenure series, I also did time practices regularly. And you really have to time yourself so that you don't cheat yourself. When I felt like I didn't have enough resources to practice, I would even go to Carousel to get more prelim papers. And when you are doing these time practices, it's very important that you simulate exam conditions. So do not pause the timer unnecessarily, and personally, I also do not encourage listening to music. The more you grow accustomed to the exam conditions and the style of each paper, the more confident and less afraid you will be as you will know what to expect. After practicing the papers, it's very important that you self-mark. And if you've gotten any questions wrong or you don't know how to do certain questions, do your corrections and resolve them immediately. Do not wait. One of the ways I resolved my queries immediately was to ask my close friends and I also helped them whenever they had their own queries. So there was this really warm mutual support system. I also went for consultation sessions to see my teachers together with my friends so that we could clear all our doubts in one shot. And this is quite helpful as not only do we get to learn from each other's mistakes, it was also an opportunity to revise our content knowledge. For me, after self-marking my own paper, I would write out the parts which I missed out in my answers in full as part of my corrections. And when necessary, I also went back to specific parts of my notes to fill in my knowledge gaps. I would like to highlight that doing this immediately or with urgency is very very crucial because if you don't, it may not produce the desired levels of effectiveness and could potentially become counterproductive instead. And for strategy number 6, I learned how to critically analyse my own paper. I think it's a really important and useful skill to know how to introspect and analyse your own paper so that you know exactly where you went wrong and which parts need to be rectified urgently. This way, less time is wasted worrying and more time can be spent effectively correcting your mistakes and making meaningful progress. And I do this for every single test paper be the ones my school gave me or the extra exam papers that I did. It's very important to analyse which topics or which parts of the paper or which papers you are weaker in. Because many times, when we get a score that is lower than our expectations, we tend to let our emotions take over and feel like we are just bad in that particular subject. But really, what we should do is to think rationally and logically and find out the root cause of the problem. Trust me, sometimes a minor tweak on the correctly identified areas can boost your score by at least one grade. Comment down below and let me know if you want me to do another video on how I analyse my papers. Apart from analysing your papers, what I also did was that number 7, I tracked my scores or grades for each time practice that I've done. There are a couple of benefits to tracking your progress. Firstly, you can see whether you have improved, whether your grades are fluctuating or whether your grades are declining. This will tell you whether your study method is actually working and if it's not, you may want to make some tweaks and changes. Not only that, doing this gives you certainty and predictability so that by the time you reach A-levels, you'll be more mentally prepared and be less nervous when you're taking the exams. Because what tracking your grades does is that it shows you a trend and from there you can kind of project and expect how well you will do during the actual A-levels, which helps in managing expectations as well. Putting together all the strategies that I've mentioned thus far, now that I look back, I actually realized that I created a system or feedback loop of firstly studying smart consistently, ensuring my basics were rock solid with active recall, practicing tons of exam questions and papers, and then doing my corrections and resolving my doubts immediately, 
analyzing my paper to see which parts I was weaker in, and then tracking my grades to see if whatever I'm doing is helping me improve and whether is it helping me move closer to my goals. And once I've started to finally see results and improvements, meaning that my strategies were working, I tightened the loop even further and built up an unstoppable momentum, which I believe led me to finally achieve an A in H2 chemistry during my A-level exams. So, those are the 8 strategies that pushed me from an E to an A in H2 chemistry during my A-levels. No doubt, it has been a long, arduous and painful journey for me and if you're a junior college student right now, I totally feel your pain and hopefully this video can help you in a way or another. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe so that you won't miss out on more tutorial study advice videos just like this. All the best to everyone out there, don't give up and press on. This is Grateful Academy and I'll see you in the next video.